Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Mishmash Monday, and today is going to be a real old-fashioned mosh. We're going to see how many subjects we can get to in this short amount of time. Not going to be a long video, but I'm going to try and pack it in with all kinds of useless information. Uh, first thing we want to do is that, remember that hack knife had that real dry leather sheath, and a lot of guys were saying that it was making them crazy seeing that dry leather sheath. Let's go upstairs in the attic and address Okay, it. we're up here in the attic, and I can't emphasize enough how much stuff I have up here. Uh, my buddy Wire at Wireworks, you know him from uh, from being one of the community here, and, and uh, we're into old radios. Look at these two old Helicrafter radios I uh, fixed up. I used to use these all the time back in the day. And uh, yeah, it's just all kinds of stuff up here. But um, I found uh, one thing up here I want to show you, tucked over here. Can you see this? That's something that uh, everybody got a kick out of. But first, let's get to that hack knife uh, casing. Uh, I can't find the Orbanoffs. I have it, but I have this other uh, uh, preserver that we'll put on now. Now we're over here at the leatherworking bench, and you can see here today, uh, today's project, we're going to, you see when it leather gets this dry, like on the, the hack knife here, uh, the sheath, you could see it could start to crack and, and develop all kinds of checks in it. Uh, this is the point of when you clean it off, make sure it's clean, which we did. And uh, then we're going to put some of this on. Now, I have oven offs, but this is very similar to it. Uh, J.E. Sedgwick makes this from uh, over in the UK. And uh, can you smell it? Yeah. That has a nice smell to it. It's it's made with uh, beeswax and other natural oils and things like that. We're going to rub that into the uh, the sheath here, and you'll see the difference, what it looks like. See how dry it is? We'll wait till we... Let me get some more light on here. See that? How dry that is? And we'll finish it up, and you'll see what it looks like. Okay, now you can see uh, we put it on, and it, uh, it'll darken it just a little bit. But now, it's especially since it's a little cold up here, uh, it really don't absorb well into it. So you just let this dry now, and then what you do is you're going to buff it out later with a brush or a dry rag, and, and it'll give a nice luster to it. So I'll show you that later Okay, on. next up on the mosh, I want to show you this. Uh, this is something that when I was at the flea market last time, I picked up, and a lot of guys picked up on what it was. Uh, this is my original pocket fisherman ron popeel was that his name and uh this was a uh, a revolutionary <laughs> fishing device back in the 70s and you can see here and it even says truly the new fishing invention of the century so uh this was amazing and look at the old time Again, this was from the 70s or whatnot. It had a uh, star drag. It had a little place you could put your your fishing tackle and, and whatnot. How to use it. How to fish. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty amazing, right? I love when it came with this stuff. Even how to do knots and how to service it if you had to, if the thing needed new uh, line or whatever. But uh, I used this up at summer camp when I was in Scouts. And I have to tell you, this is no, this is no joke. Let me show you how it opens up. Uh, first of all, you open up this little back hatch here, and this is where your, I guess your hook would be, or your line, or things like that. And then you just snap it like this, and that's it. It's it's ready to go. And and then all you have to do is, on this uh, handle here, you opened it up like that, locked into place, and then you brought this little tab around, and uh, and now you were ready to go. And uh, this would, ca this does a great job. Uh, especially for fresh water or something like that and for small fish. I had a great time with this and uh, It's very smooth. The action's good um, And you press the button and when you release it, you know, obviously that the line goes out and then you just can hear how nice it is It's it, I'm telling you this is not a joke. It really worked good pocket fisherman uh, Who remembers these Ron Popeil? He was kind of a a salesman back then, he sold everything. Okay, I couldn't resist it. I had to fire it up while I'm up here. Let me tell you a little bit about this bad boy. This is a mo uh, Holocrafters company, model S38. In 1946, right after World War II, uh, they came out with these radios for the consumer market, and they were relatively cheap at $47.50. Think about that in today's money. I mean, that's a lot of money today. Can you imagine? That was like the big thing, but this was the world of entertainment. Remember, radio was the golden age of radio, and, and this was uh, like having a big screen TV at your house. And uh, here it is, you can see, still works, 
I uh, changed the capacitors, and this is all tuned up. I don't have, this is just the internal antenna on here, but uh, I used to come up here late at night and uh, tune in stations after midnight. Uh, some of the big stations would uh, turn down. And uh, you could tune in stations far away. Like I used to tune in CKLW up in Canada and things like that. And just a beautiful little radio. And, uh, you know, they still hold up today. It's a tube radio. Very interesting the way they're made. And uh, this is just something I, I always love. down the basement. And like I said, it was a little chilly upstairs. So we're just going to hit this quick with the heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, uh, I'll tell you, this is really a good investment. Get a cheap one from Harbor Freight or something. They're great for shrink, heat shrink tubing. Or sometimes you just want to put a little bit of heat on something. A torch is not the way to go when you're dealing with leather and stuff like that. Uh, a good heat gun. Okay, now you can see that the uh, the treatment we put on there completely absorbed into the leather. When I hit it with the heat gun, the first thing you'll see is that it gets like, it looks wet almost, and then it sucks right into the leather. So now it is perfectly protected. Now, if you want to put a little sheen on it, which I always like to do, a little bit of natural shoe polish over this because it's already protected, and that'll give it that nice Okay, sheen. who remembers one of these? Yeah, that's right. Shoe shine box. My dad used to... When he was a kid, shine shoes to make some money. And uh, believe it or not, this box wasn't his. But I have one just like it upstairs, packed away. This one I picked up when I went to the uh, tool meet uh, a few months ago. And the guy was, it was like $8. And I just couldn't pass it by because it's got all this great stuff in here. Mink oil is real good. Remember that? And, uh, you know, all kinds of shoe polish. And uh, who, who doesn't love the smell of shoe polish? Uh, parade. I know some of my marine friends out there are going, oh, geez, I've seen enough of that to last me a lifetime. But, uh, what's so interesting about a lot of these, uh, these, I like these old graphics, you know, on here. A Kiwi was a real popular one. Uh, you twist this little handle here and it would pop up the lid and then you would get that beautiful smell in here. And, and, uh, I love the smell of shoe polish. I mean, I've spent hours and hours with it. But we're going to see, uh, maybe a little brown on there will, uh, We'll uh, give it a nice uh, shine. So let's see what we got. Hello, 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 now you remember what it looked like before we started and we're calling this project done Sorry about the little flash back there. I couldn't help it. What do you think? Isn't that beautiful? That's just the way. Now it looks like something you'd be proud to stick in your pocket or something. Looks like, and you know what's good about this? It'll wear, it'll look better with time. So, okay, let's see what Okay, else next up. Remember this uh, life-size skull that I bought? I always wondered, they said life-size, but it seems kind of smaller, right? Than life-size skull? Does this look like the same size as my now, head? When I bought that skull, it said anatomically correct, you know, or to right size. But I don't know. It seems a little bit small to me, you know? I don't know if it's uh, my head is too big or these things are too small. Okay, moving right along. My girlfriend has a uh, rescue dog that she uh, got from a pound years and about seven years ago now. Dog's name is Molly. A uh, beautiful dog. It's like a shepherd Doberman mix. Uh, big, about 100 pounds. Big dog, but this dog's claim to fame is if you buy it a squeaky toy, which they love, you know, squeaky toy. <laughs> it's kind of funny even saying it. When you buy them uh, these uh, toys for her, uh, that, that dog can uh, rip that toy apart in less than three minutes and remove the squeaky. I don't know. It's just a talent. Maybe other dogs have that. Well, uh, last week uh, she bought her a toy. Three minutes later, the squeaky was out, and then I picked up the toy to throw it, you know, see if she would play catch, and, and it lit up. And I was like, wow, look at that it's kind of... Are you like me? Do you When you see something, like, light up or something has a sound, like those old cards, remember them old holiday cards that would have music in it? I, I'd always take them apart to see how the thing worked or what made it work. 
you know, the battery that was in there and the little speaker. And well, I said, I got to see what makes this thing light up. You got to check this inside out. Inside of the squeaky toy was this uh, rubber ball like this, right? You see, it's rubber. But what's, you know, and it's soft, but uh, it's all sealed up. What's interesting is when you tap it and you tap it, look at it, it makes this crazy cool light. And I'm going to have to shut the lights off so you can see how interesting this is. I said, wow, this is something else. I hope it shows up on camera as, as nice as this. Okay, looks. the lights are out and uh, this is it. Now look at that. I'm amazed at that. Is not is that not awesome? I guess that's where the bulb hits it. You can see, but it it's shock absorb shock resistant. You can bounce it, and wow, isn't that some kind of light? That's I mean, it's as bright in person uh, as it's showing up on on the screen. I can see here, but you know, I, it don't take much to amaze me. But this amazes me. Okay, next up on the Never Ending Mosh, uh, a couple weeks ago we were talking about pencils, and I had a few people ask me because uh, we were talking about the Blackwing Palomino. Uh, those pencils are, you know, supposed to be the best, but they're like a dollar each, which is a lot cheaper than they used to be. They were, you know, on eBay, they were going for a hundred bucks a piece a while back. But people were saying, is this something that's a little more economical that, you know, is that I find like, uh, do I like the Ticonderogas and all? So I've been looking for different pencils, but I, something came up that I saw on a cool tool website the other day that uh, I ordered them and I've been trying them out and I want to tell okay, you. Okay, here's the pencil that I found and it's called the, uh, it's a Papermate product and it's called the, Mar the Murado Black Warrior. And here is the pencil here. You can see it has kind of a, a flat black finish here, you know, gold lettering. Um, it doesn't have a removable eraser, but uh, the ratings were very high on here. I don't know. I try, I'm try. i trying it out, and I'm trying to give you an honest opinion of what I think. See, I compare everything. I got a couple really good pencils, like like this one here is one of my favorites. This one, it was. it's a 50-year-old uh, pencil that was probably, you know, given away years ago, but this thing is just right so nice. It has such a nice... You know, when you when you uh, run this pencil across, it's so smooth and, and it just glides. Now, I take a, a pencil like that. Now, I'll, I'll compare it one by one. I look at the darkness. You see the darkness. I look at how it uh, how it fares compared to the other one. Then I'll write with it for a while. You know, who remembers this? The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Who remembers that saying? You know, so I'll write while then I'll draw. Well, you know, I'll sketch out and see how it uh how it may be, uh, you know, will, will shade. So I've been working with these pencils, and I will let you know, but uh, so far, they seem very nice, and uh, they're cheap. So it's $3 a box, or a little over $3 a box, and uh, a box of 12, you know, when you buy them in sets of three or whatever, Amazon, you can get them four. But uh, that's pretty economical. If you want to try something out, just throwing that okay, out. Okay, that was a heck of a mosh, wasn't it? All right, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.